fire is something that we all are very much familiar with. But did you know that in the vastness of the universe, fire is incredibly rare? In fact, it is not just rare. So far, we haven't found fire anywhere in the universe except here on Earth. That's right. Earth, the only planet known to host life, is also the only place where we have seen fire. Now you might be thinking, what about the sun? What about the planets that rain fire? Planets with volcanoes? Or even planets with massive lightning? How can we say there is no fire elsewhere in the universe? But the truth is, none of these phenomena are actually fire as we know it. So what exactly is fire? Have you ever really thought about it? Some people think that fire is plasma, the fourth state of matter. It is true that when you expose a flame to a strong electric field, it bends, showing there are charged ions in the flame. But this does not mean fire is plasma. This comparison shows how a flame burns on Earth and how a flame burns on the International Space Station, ISS. On the ISS, flames form strange spherical shape. What could be the reason for this? We know that the hottest, most efficient flames are blue in color. But what give this blue color to the flames? And moreover, there are some flames which are nearly invisible. Even if we had been using fire for thousands of years, there are so many things that we do not know about fire. So what really is this phenomenon we call fire? Why have we only found it on Earth? And what is the connection between fire and life itself? Let us explore these questions in this video. Hi friends, welcome to another episode of Science Simplified for All. We all know the basic definition of fire from school. Fire occurs when fuel burns in the presence of oxygen. But let us break that down a little further. When we say fuel, it does not just mean things like petrol or diesel. In reality, anything that can burn is considered fuel, whether it's wood, paper or even cloth. And when we say, in the presence of oxygen, we often mean the oxygen in the atmosphere. But did you know that fire can occur even without atmospheric oxygen? Some chemicals, known as oxidizers, can fuel a fire without the need for gaseous oxygen at all. Now, when we say something burns, what is really happening? It is a fast chemical reaction between fuel and oxygen that releases a lot of energy, primarily in the form of heat. But here is something important. Even if you have fuel and oxygen, it is not enough to start a fire. The fuel has to reach a certain temperature before it will ignite. This temperature is called the ignition point, and it is different for every material. To get to that ignition point, you always need heat, at least in the beginning. That is why you often need a match or a spark to get the fire going. But once it starts, the heat from the fire itself will keep feeding the rest of the fuel and the fire continues to burn. So, fire requires three essential ingredients, fuel, oxygen, and heat. This combination is often referred to as the fire triangle. You have probably seen this image during firefighting training at workplaces. If you remove any one of these three components, the fire will stop. For example, when you pour water on a fire, you are removing heat. When you cover a fire with a fire blanket, you're cutting off its oxygen supply. But do not worry. This is not a video about firefighting. I just wanted to set the stage. Now, let us take a closer look at the fuel part of the fire. Most of the fires we see here on Earth are fueled by organic materials, things that come from living organisms. Take fossil fuels like petrol and diesel, for example. These come from the remains of ancient living creatures. Wood, paper and cloth, they come from plants. Even materials like plastic and synthetic fabrics are derived from petrochemicals, which are also fossil-based. And what about oxygen? In the early days of Earth, there was no any oxygen in the atmosphere. Oxygen was first created on Earth by a bacteria called cyanobacteria. All the oxygen in our atmosphere today was produced by some sort of living organisms. So, in short, the two fundamental components of fire, fuel and oxygen, are products of life here on Earth. 
So in a way, the main reasons why fire exists on our planet is because life exists on our planet. But what about elsewhere in the universe? Does that mean only living things can produce fuel? Not necessarily. There is plenty of fuel in the universe that does not come from living things. Take methane, for example. It is a natural gas that is abundant throughout the universe and a very good fuel. Saturn's moon, Titan, has huge amounts of methane and it has been found on other planets and moons as well. However, there is no oxygen on Titan. So even though there is plenty of fuel, there is no fire. Now imagine for a moment that somehow, by some natural means, oxygen was to reach Titan. Maybe from a meteor or some other source. If that happened, you might get fire there. But it would not last forever. The fire would burn until either the oxygen or the fuel ran out. After that, it would die out. It is even possible that some planets or moons in the universe once had fire in the distant past. But if the fuel and oxygen were consumed long ago, that fire would be long gone, which is why we do not see it today. But on Earth, things are different. The fuel and oxygen needed for fire are being continuously produced and it is life that is responsible for that. Microorganisms, plants and trees, particularly those that perform photosynthesis, play a significant role in this process. Plants and trees are the primary sources of fuels like firewood, coal, paper, and even cloth. Even when we look at animals, the energy stored in their bodies ultimately comes from plants. So, the fossil fuels we derive from ancient animals also trace back to plants as the original source of energy. Plants use minerals from the soil, water, and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to create materials that later become fuel. And to do this, they rely on energy from the sun. As a byproduct of this process, oxygen is also continuously produced. In short, fire exists on Earth because the sun's energy is constantly being absorbed by life to create both fuel and oxygen. Life, therefore, is what allows fire to keep burning on Earth. We have not yet discovered life on any other planet in the universe. And that is likely why we have not found a planet with fire either. Although we often hear the phrase, the sun is burning, there is actually no fire in the sun. Yes, the sun is full of hydrogen, which is a flammable substance, but fire, as we know it, involves oxygen, and there is no oxygen in the sun. So the energy produced by the sun is not due to burning of hydrogen. Instead, the sun's energy comes from a process called nuclear fusion. In the sun's core, Hydrogen nuclei fuse together to form helium, and in doing so, they release an immense amount of energy. But this fusion reaction only happens deep inside the sun's core. The energy it produces is not reaching us directly. We know that when objects get extremely hot, they emit light. Think about an iron rod. When it heats up, it first glows red, then yellow as it gets hotter. The same thing happens with the filament in a light bulb. This type of light, emitted by hot objects, is known as thermal radiation or black body radiation. Due to the intense heat generated by fusion in the sun's core, its outer layers also become incredibly hot. This heat causes the sun to emit light, but this light is not produced by fire. Instead, it is black body radiation. The sunlight we see is black body radiation coming from the sun's outermost layers. Similarly, the light from other stars is also a form of black body radiation, not fire. When we look at a volcano, it may seem like fire is erupting from it. But in reality, what's coming out is molten lava, boiled rock and mud. The glow from lava is not caused by fire. Instead, it is the same type of thermal radiation we discussed earlier, the kind emitted by any material that has been heated to a high temperature. In rare cases, Certain gases released from a volcano can ignite when they come into contact with the oxygen in the atmosphere, creating small bursts of fire. But even then, it is the oxygen in Earth's atmosphere that allows this fire to occur. Now let us take a closer look at what a flame actually is. Why do some flames appear blue while others are yellow? Is the flame a form of plasma? And why does it have that distinctive shape? 
as we discussed earlier, fire is caused by a rapid chemical reaction between fuel and oxygen. One of the main byproducts of this reaction is energy, mostly in the form of heat. But it is only when this heat is converted into visible light that we see a flame. If the heat does not get converted into visible light, the fire will still be there, but we will not be able to see it. This is what we call an invisible flame. There are several ways in which heat can become visible light. One way is through the black body radiation we mentioned earlier, the glow that comes from extremely hot objects. The fuels we commonly encounter, like wood, candles or gas, are made up of compounds containing carbon and hydrogen. When these fuels burn, they typically turn into carbon dioxide and water vapor. But in many cases, combustion is not complete, meaning the fuel does not fully burn. When this happens, tiny unburnt particles of carbon, known as soot, remain in the flame. In a flame where incomplete combustion occurs, there is a large number of these soot particles. The heat from the flame makes these carbon particles extremely hot and when they are heated up, they start to glow. This is the yellow light you see in a flame. So, when we see a typical flame with a yellow color, what we are really seeing is light from the hot, glowing carbon particles inside it. If you hold a spoon over a candle flame for a few seconds, you will notice that black soot deposits on the spoon. These are the carbon particles from the flame that have not fully combusted. On the other hand, when fuel burns completely or when complete combustion happens, no carbon particles are left behind. In this case, the flame will not appear yellow, it will have a blue color. This blue color is not caused by black body radiation. Instead, it comes from the emission spectrum of certain molecules in the flame, which emit light at specific wavelengths. When an element is heated, its electrons absorb energy and jump to higher energy levels. But when those electrons return to their normal state, the extra energy is released in the form of light. The color of this light depends on the energy difference between the two states. And this is unique for each element. That unique light pattern is called the emission spectrum of the element. But emission spectra are not limited to individual elements. They can also come from molecules and compounds. When a fuel molecule undergoes combustion, initially, it breaks down into smaller components called radicals. These radicals also have their own emission spectra. For some radicals in a burning fuel, the emission spectrum is in the blue region of visible light. That is why we see a blue flame. It is not black body radiation, but light from the emission spectrum of radicals. This means that for a flame to be visible, the heat generated by the fire must somehow be converted into visible light. Otherwise, even if there is a fire, it might be invisible. Flames from certain fuels, like hydrogen, methane or alcohol, are often nearly invisible. In a dark background, you might only be able to see such flames as a faint glow. That too, if you look closely. Since these flames are so hard to see, they can be dangerous. You might mistakenly think the fire is out or not even realize there is a fire at all. One more interesting thing about flames on Earth is that they always point upward. This happens because of Earth's gravity and atmospheric pressure. The air inside the flame gets extremely hot, causing its density to drop, and as a result, it rises. Fresh air then flows in from the surrounding area to replace it, fueling the fire. This upward movement of hot air is what gives flames their upward direction. It also helps by continuously removing waste products from the fire and bringing in fresh oxygen to keep it burning. But in places like the International Space Station, ISS, where there is very little gravity, this does not happen. Without gravity, hot air does not rise, and as a result, flames in space are round. This round shape makes it easier for waste products to build up around the fire, which can cause it to burn out more quickly. Now, let us address the question, is there plasma in flames? When temperatures get extremely high, atoms in the material can lose their electrons and become ions, which is what we call plasma. For this to happen due to heat, the temperature needs to exceed 3000 degrees Celsius. 
the everyday fires we see, like wood fires or candle flames, do not get that hot. Even a gas stove flame only reaches around 1500 degrees Celsius, so plasma does not form in these flames. However, during the chemical reaction that creates fire, fuel breaks down into smaller parts or radicals. Some of these radicals are charged ions. That is why flames respond to strong electric fields. But this does not mean they are plasma. Some flames, though, can get hot enough to produce plasma. For example, an oxyacetylene torch, which is used for cutting metal, can exceed 3000 degrees Celsius. In such high temperature flames, plasma can form, but even then, only part of the flame contains plasma. I hope this video helped you learn something new about fire. If you enjoyed this video, please like and comment. Your support motivates me to create more content. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with new uploads. Thank you.